Applications like SpeedTree will allow you to export your vegetation along with wind simulations. But we can also achieve that type of a look inside of Houdini. So let's take a look at how we can do that today using the Vellum Solver. So to start off here, I just have a basic scene with a backdrop in there. Go ahead and disable that for now. And then I have our plant, which if I dive in here, is just a Megascans asset. And that's kind of large to start off with, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and just work with it in its current state. So I'm just gonna step through the tree that we have here. So not too much going on here, just uh, a few nodes. So start off, we have a group, which is gonna be a pin group. So we're gonna pin some points here. If I go ahead and take a look at this, so set this to wireframe can we can see what's going on here so the only points that i have set to be a part of this group are the ones that are the bases of the stalks of each uh, little plant piece so all these down at the bottom and then there are some that are stuck in throughout the middle here that you have to pay attention to they if you don't have them pinned they will fall to the ground and you won't get the simulation that you're looking for so just select all your points at the base of each plant and we will use those to pin those points. So then we wanna drop in a vellum, vellum solver. Let's go back to just smooth shaded for now. And uh, just a vellum claw solver will work. And I've left pretty much everything default except for a few settings here. So pin points, obviously we wanna put our pin group in there. Just drop that in. And then the stretch and the bend settings. Actually, I didn't end up touching the stretch settings here, but I did touch the bend because you don't want it to be stretchy. You don't want these plant leaves to stretch out or the stalks to spread, uh, stretch out. So we'll leave it at the highest setting so that it's super uh, stiff and rigid. And then for our bend, because we do want them to bend a little bit, we just set this to 10. I found that to be a good number for the scale of this model and for this model itself, they'll just have to play around with that and see what works the best. And then you wanna drop in a vellum struts. So this is going to add some, um, basically like some rigidity to the actual stocks. Without this, it will basically just collapse in on itself. So I just have the vellum struts here. I don't think I actually ended up changing anything and if you want to take a look at what's going on, you can pipe out the middle constraints to a null. And you can see where your, where your struts are kind of lining up. So you can see they're kind of going in between the points. It's kind of a little bit hard to see what's going on here. But you see all these lines going between the different points is where each one of the uh, constraints basically is going to give it some rigidity. And then you want to pipe everything into a, a vellum solver. And then I have just gone into the forces here and lowered the gravity a little bit because it uh, gives you a little bit nicer animation um, to if you have that lowered. If you don't have it lowered, it might just kind of collapse in on itself. You have to play around with the vellum struts a little bit to get a, uh, a good look with the gravity set to what's normal which is negative 9.8. So I just dropped that down a little bit to negative five, and that was a good number for my current simulation. And then for the actual solver, if I dive in here, I did also add a pop wind, and I cranked up the amplitude to a little over three and the swirl size to 4.2 to give us the anim animation that you saw in the beginning. And it gives us something pretty, pretty nice for uh, this a specific model and then from there I just brought that into a vellum prose process so if I switch between the two here you can see that all it's doing is just oops all it's doing is just subdividing the mesh and see let's go ahead we'll jump to the wireframe and see that that's our mesh before and then once we put the post process on with a Catmull Clark subdivision with a subdivision step of one, gives us a nice looking model, a little bit higher resolution, a little bit smoother, and uh, you don't have to resim or anything like that. 
And then from there, we do have a labs uh, tool set item, which you can make animations loop. So it's called just make loop labs, make loop. So you have to have the labs tool set and then just set it to primitive as the input type. And this will give you a nice looping animation. You can see it playing here. It's gonna take some time to simulate everything out. And then once it's done, it should go pretty quick, hopefully here. Looks like it got hung up there on something. But once it's done simulating everything through, you'll see that it'll play back in real time a little bit better. There you go. I just have the real time toggle down here to give us what the animation will actually look like as it's playing in real time. So nothing too difficult there. And then once I was done with all of that, I just dropped in a transform to scale it down and added a material to it. Nothing too difficult and it gives you some decent looking results. So pretty simple setup here, not too much going on. It's just basically these three nodes that are doing all of the work. And then if you wanna just subdivide your model up, you can use that. But these three nodes along with a pop wind in here will give you some good looking results for any sort of wind. You'll have to play around with the settings obviously, but for the most part, this should do the trick if you're just looking for some simple wind animation on your models. But anyways, Houdini 19 will be out here in the next week. I do plan on taking a look at some of that next week. So keep an eye out for all of that. There's a bunch of new stuff in there. The presentation went down, uh, the launch presentation went down on the 18th, which is today. So if you missed that, go ahead, take a look at that. There's some cool stuff coming. A lot of stuff uh, is being added and some new render stuff that I'm super excited about and then a bunch of other stuff as well and as well as some new stuff with the vellum solver that we're using here so keep an eye out for all of that that's coming in the next week or two so anyways I do have a bunch of other stuff on my channel taking a look at Redshift, Octane, Clarice and a bunch of other Houdini tutorials so if you're interested in any of that make sure you take a look at that otherwise thank you guys for watching and have a good day.